name's Erica and I'm a third year med student. If you've seen the other videos in this series that I'm making, then you know a little bit about step one. I have a couple videos up already about what the test is, when you should take it, and then another video that's kind of about what I did during my first and second years. I have so much that I want to share with you guys about how I prepared for step one, so I'm gonna have this video and then probably a couple more, but this video is totally dedicated to what resources I used. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about exactly what I used and how I use them. Just to clarify, I am not endorsed or promoted by any of these products, so everything that I'm about to say is totally based on my opinion on these products and what helped me during dedicated and before then to prepare for step one. All the advice that I'm about to give you is totally based on my experience. I am just one person and everyone has totally different backgrounds on education and where they go to school and what they can afford resource wise. Everyone has a different way of studying and everyone works well with different resources. So if something doesn't work and it's not exactly what you expected based on what I'm saying, then drop it, don't use it. But I did want to just try to give you guys as much information as possible and help you guys figure out you know, what resources might be useful. So I'm going to start off by telling you what my main resources were. Obviously you can use whatever you want and these are just my suggestions, but these are the resources that I found were super critical when I was preparing for step one. The first thing that I think you should definitely buy is UWorld. Pretty much, I'm sure all of you have heard about UWorld and how amazing it is, and it really is super great. They're the best practice questions that you could possibly use. The only disclaimer that I want to share with you is that you should definitely use these questions to learn and not as a gauge of your progress. Often you can kind of feel like you're not progressing well, or like you're failing, or you get worried about how you're going to do on the real test, and I don't think that's true at all. I think that there's so much information um, in the explanation of the right answer as well as the wrong answers, and that's where I learned so much of the new material that I acquired during Dedicated. Try not to pay attention to your scores. I was the kind of person who didn't want to use UWorld at all before Dedicated. I just wanted to go through it once. Um, I didn't want to get exposed and just kind of pick answers that I felt like I had already memorized and knew but didn't really know why necessarily. I was planning on only using New World during Dedicated, but then the last like week or two of Didactics, everyone was using New World and I was freaking out because I hadn't started yet. So I did probably about a total of 200 questions before Dedicated started. Looking back on it, probably didn't need to do that, didn't really make much of a difference except for maybe like ease my nerves a little bit. Maybe it was beneficial, I don't know. But anyway, I think there's over 2,400 questions in the QBank that you can buy. And so before Dedicated started, I was doing 40 random questions, but I was doing it on tutor mode. So tutor mode basically means that you can have as much time as you want per question, and then as soon as you hit answer on that question, the answer key will pop up with the explanation and everything. And I thought that was just kind of a good way for me to start because I haven't really studied everything in detail yet, so there was a lot I didn't know yet, and I think it was overwhelming when I would do a whole block of 40 and just get like everything wrong, and then I'd have to learn all of that stuff. So it just made it a little bit more like doable, I guess, for me at that point in time to just do them up to your mode and go question by question. Once Dedicated started though, I really wanted to practice my timing and making sure I could really get through questions and analyze them and answer them before my time ran out. So everything was on time mode. On the real exam, it goes in one hour blocks of 40 questions. So during my dedicated period, I would start the morning off with two blocks of 40 questions for a total of 80 questions. So now I'm gonna show you exactly which key bank I ordered and what the format kind of looks like. All right guys, so this is the UWorld website. And all you have to do once you get to uworld.com is hit this buy button in the top right corner select step one. So when I purchased mine, I bought the 180 day QBank that has both forms one and two. This is really up to you and it's going to depend on your schedule and whether you wanted to complete UWorld one time like I did, or if you wanted to do UWorld multiple times. So unfortunately, I do not still have access to my UWorld account that I used for step one. So I just have my UWorld for step two set up, but I'll just kind of show you what it looks like when you sign in. Obviously, when you'll sign in, instead of seeing a step two, you'll see step one QBank. If you do purchase the same set that I purchased, you'll also see a step one um, like self-assessment form one and form two. Hit launch. And once you get in, it'll pop up and it'll have all your stats. 
Um, this is my step two Q bank and I've only done the surgery question, so it just has my stats for the surgery section. But again, like I said, really don't pay attention to where you stand on the percentiles. That's really unimportant. What is important is learning from these questions. You can just create a test. So you can hit tutor mode or you can hit time mode and then um, you can also select questions. So when I was doing it, again, I only did it one time, so I always selected only unused questions. It's a little bit different for step two versus for step one. So here they have subjects, medicine, OB, peds, surgery, psych. But on step one, QBank, it'll come up with like organ systems. I honestly can't exactly remember how the layout is. The real step exams are in blocks of 40, so that's the maximum amount you can do per block. So I would always do blocks of 40. You can also see previous tests. They'll have all these nice performance charts and graphs that you can look at um, if you really want to chart your progress. And I can tell you that my progress didn't necessarily parallel my UWorld progress. So again, I just really want to stress the fact that UWorld is a learning tool, not a gauge of improvement. You can also make flashcards. Um, I didn't really use the flashcards on UWorld. I'll show you what I did do for UWorld in just a second. All right, so this is the portion where I tell you how I use UWorld as a learning tool and not as a marker of progress. So really simple, I bought this binder. It's a two inch three ring binder and I just filled it with a bunch of lined paper and I got some dividing tabs and I labeled the dividing tabs as I went through your world whenever I figured I needed a new one. So it's mostly organ based, cardio, palm, renal, GI, endo, repro, micro, immuno, heme, coag, onc, stats, derm and MSK together, neuro and site together, biochem, and then I had just this blank tab and I just put notes um, were, that were random and I didn't really know where they should be at the end of the binder. I did all of my UWorld questions on random, so obviously I couldn't just be like, oh, today's a cardio day, I'm just gonna put all my notes here. I had to do a lot of flipping back and forth to make sure my questions were going in the right place as I was doing them. And I think it was definitely worth the like couple extra seconds of time it took because it was easier for me to review later since I like to review on an organ based system. Imagine this is completely empty of notes. I have nothing in there and I'm starting my UWorld questions. The first question I get, bam, let's say it's a GI question. So I'd go to my GI section, open it up, and I would read through what the question was saying. So I got this question wrong for a reason, or maybe I got the question right, but there was some information that was missing from my knowledge, my repertoire that I needed to write down so I could review it later. The first thing I would do is I would just read through thoroughly the answers in the UWorld question. So if there's anything in either the correct answer or the incorrect answer explanations that I did not know, it would go into this binder because I thought that was important for me to review later. Some people say don't waste your time reading through all the incorrect answers, but I went through every single correct and every single incorrect answer and that worked for me. So that's just what I did. So this first question, I am guessing I probably missed something about anatomy considering the duodenum. So I put where it's located generally in the L2 region and it is also called the descending part. So I just put basic things as my headliner and then um, more specific things in regards to the questions as bullet points under there. What it looks like on the CT and some anatomy stuff about what drains into the duodenum, the fact that the second part of the duodenum is the junction point of the foregut and the midgut. So I just wrote down a few key things that either I could not remember or I was learning for the first time in UWorld and I compiled it into this binder. So here is another example, and this is from the Durham section. I'm guessing in this section, it was a question asking about a diagnosis for a specific presentation. So obviously I did not understand the differential very well. So I just outlined different types of skin conditions and what's differentiating between them. So it's really basic. That's just how I did my notes. Anything that I felt like I was gonna forget or need to review, I just wrote down. It's a pretty thick stack as you can see here. So I would basically go through this information about like three or four times, I guess. The first time obviously is when I'm first writing down my notes when I'm going through the questions. The second is after I would go through all of the questions that I did for the day and read through all the correct and incorrect explanations, I would then go and see what notes I wrote during that day. So as you can tell here, 
I dated all of my notes so I knew what notes I made on which day. So for example, on March 26th, after I had gone through all of the notes, I would then go through all of my notes in each section to make sure I understood everything that I learned that day. I usually do that right after just to get some good repetition. And again, space repetition is important as well. So if I did have extra time or I needed to do something different, I would go through my older notes and just make sure I remembered them. Um, so that was like the potentially third time I would see them. And then the last time I would see them is the week before I took my real exam, I went through this entire binder because I just wanted a last look at high yields, things that I had trouble remembering. I'll go through my overall schedule in a different video so it'll make more sense, but basically the last week I did kind of a cram review. So this was part of it. I went through every single note I had in this binder. Okay, so here is another staple of step studying. Like I said in a previous video, the best way for me to get organized, I did get the spine of my book cut off and I did that at Office Depot, and I think, like I mentioned before, it was around $20. Obviously, it's very loved because it's just completely <laughs> coming apart. A lot of these pages, the hole punches are just completely torn. I just wanted to show you, again, a little bit more detail how I annotated my book. There are some pages that have no notes at all, and that's either because I understood some concept very well, or I didn't feel like I needed to add any notes to understand what was in the book already. But then sometimes I'll get to a page where I have a ton of notes to make. So um, I'll, I'll usually start by trying to get them to fit into the margins and writing really tiny. There's a lot of extra space in this book, which is nice. But then sometimes there's so much information and things that don't even seem to be in the book that I just have to insert a little piece of lined paper and write my own notes in there. And I try to put it in a place where it makes sense. So this is talking about major inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And then there are also some minor ones that we learned about in class, which aren't necessarily high yields, but I did still want to have them in here. And I was actually surprised to get a couple questions on some of the stuff that we learned in class, but I hadn't seen in Pathoma or UWorld or anything like that. So I am glad that I did include some of those notes in here. You don't want to go too crazy, obviously, because you only have so much time to learn so much information. And so all these post-it notes and these little notes in the margins, those are all things that I wrote during the school year, so before Dedicated even started. When Dedicated started, I had already gotten through this entire book once, so it was really easy for me to just read through it and understand it. I very rarely had to look things up on Google because anything that I was confused on, I had already written my notes for. So again, another example, I have a pretty good amount of notes here for kidney stones in the margins. And then I also have some more information specifically about certain kind of kidney stones on a separate piece of paper, just because I felt like it was information that was missing and I needed to have that in here. So during my dedicated period, I had pages that I had assigned myself to get through each day and just making sure I could recall it from memory as opposed to just like inactively reading through them. I would actively talk through it. For instance, I would look at this and it says renal cell carcinoma. So before I even looked at any of this, I would just try to either say out loud or type or write out everything I knew about renal cell carcinoma. And then I would look at my first aid and I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, so I hit all these points in my notes, I'm good. Or I would say, oh, I totally forgot that there are perineoplastic syndromes. So if I did come across something I didn't know, then I would get those three by five index cards and I would make a note card. So the front of the card would say something like renal cell carcinoma, perineoplastic syndromes, and the back of the card would just have all of the perineoplastic syndromes listed. I didn't review the note cards until my last cram week, which I will talk about again in another video. So it was basically just me preparing to get more cramming in. But again, trying to learn and retain as much as possible in the moment. This is another extremely high yield resource. I really liked it. I used it mostly during the school year. So I used it less in dedicated compared to first aid. Um, but it was really good at getting you a really general understanding of a lot of different pathologies. During the school year, I went through the videos one time and I got through the book twice. I just tried to incorporate it with my class schedule as much as I could. So I just opened up to the liver section. I would look at my class schedule and see when we were gonna have lectures on 
liver disease. And when I saw that week, I would wa I watched this entire section the weekend before. So I knew everything that was high yield. And then when I went to lecture, it was just kind of filling in details. And those details are the things that I would write out in my first aid and in pathoma. So let's just go for cross-reference. So this is kind of like where the liver disease section starts in uh, first aid and here is the pathoma. So you can see that there's a lot of overlap between different things like alcohol related liver disease, alcoholic liver disease. When I was studying, I always had both these books open at the same time and I tried to find if there were parallels so that I made sure I had all the details for a certain disease and didn't have to go back and forth and then be like, oh, I just studied alcohol liver disease an hour ago. I should have looked at pathoma at the same time. So I'd always have both of these books open so I could um, do some cross references and then during class I wrote down extra notes so I'm talking about alcohol liver disease here and here right but in class we learned some extra details so I would add extra details into my first aid most of the extra details I um, learned from class or from my own independent study I added to my first aid just to be consistent so most of my notes in my pathoma are just notes from the videos that accompany the book so if you see my underlines here, that's when Sitar would say like, oh, this is really high yield. Literally almost every like two minutes he would say that. So it was a lot of underlines. So yeah, basically um, my advice is to try to overlap first aid and pathoma whenever possible so that you can make sure you get as big of a picture of the disease as you can. And then also if you really want to go the extra mile, Take notes about details that you learn in class that aren't present in either of the research. Extremely high yield resource for me was Sketchy Med. This literally saved my life for all of pharmacology and micro. It's the most amazing thing ever. It shows you videos with different pictures as you can see on their website. And they're associated with important key points in different pathology or micro or pharmacology. And it just helps you remember everything so well. So for pharmacology, for example, it'll go through mechanism of action, it'll go through uses, contraindications, adverse effects, it goes through everything that's important. So I was lucky enough that my med school actually paid for an account for each student, but if you need to purchase your own, you would just go to plans and then hit students, and then it'll have a few different options for you. Um, I really loved Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. I think these are must-gets. And Sketchy Path was okay for me. I think there was there were a lot of things that were kind of like, mm, that's kind of a push. I don't know if I'll be able to remember that like visual aid. But some of them were extremely good and super helpful. If I had to purchase this and my school didn't provide any of it, I would definitely just go for the full Sketchy Medical that includes all three of these packages. Um, just because there were so many of the paths that were helpful, even though there were some that were like really far-fetched. I don't know, I guess I would probably end up having to do the 12-month plan because, like I said, I watched all the sketchy videos before Dedicated started. I didn't want to have to watch any videos during Dedicated period, so I had made sure I'd watched them and even rewatched a few of them so that when I was going through them on Dedicated, it was just as a reference to make sure I remembered the picture. You can see here, this is micro in green, and it just has all the bacteria, fungus, viruses, parasites, and it has all of the high yield organisms. There are more organisms listed in first aid, so I do recommend going through those in your first aid just to cover all of your gaps. These are really helpful. And then obviously you have all the drugs, and you have all of your path. So the path videos are extremely long, so if you are going to watch all of them, I do recommend starting as early as you can. Sketchy Path wasn't published until we were a few blocks into our second year, so I think the first one I watched was Neuro. The Neuro ones are really good. I highly suggest those ones for sure. Micro was block six for us, which is the first block of second year. So I tried to watch all the videos before we had lecture on them. So for example, we had like, I think it was like a week of just going through different bacteria and the pharmacology for the bacteria. So I watched all of those videos as well as down here under antimicrobials. I watched all the ones through bacteria before the class lectures even happened. So I had this picture already and I could just kind of add the information that we learned in class to my mental picture. Okay. And the last really high yield resource I wanna talk about 
is the MBME exams that you can buy online. Pretty sure they were $60. There are different forms and you can go through Reddit and kind of read a little bit about each form, which ones were kind of easier, which ones are harder, which ones are more predictive to score, but obviously all of these things are just kind of top. I feel like a lot of those trends are fairly accurate. Um, and I'll give you more details on what I thought about each different form in another video. You can see here I did four total, but one of them I did before Dedicated started as kind of like my baseline, and I took that in mid-March. And then another one I did like the weekend before my exam. I didn't sit down and take the whole thing. I broke it down and just did one section a day until my exam. And I'll talk about what happened with that one later. It's basically a half exam. It has four sections of 40 questions, which is um, different than the real exam, which again is seven blocks of 40 questions. So it is a little shorter, but they definitely are still very helpful. So Goljan are well-known audios that you can listen to. And I don't know exactly where you can find them because a friend sent me all these audios. I recommend listening to them. He has a lot of high yield stuff and he's really easy to listen to. It's not super dry. So I actually listened to them when I was driving from Reno to Vegas um, because it's like a seven hour drive and this is, <laughs> it's 1.2 days long actually. So I didn't get through all of it, but I got through a good amount and I mean, I had nothing else to do while I was driving, so might as well. Like I've said before, I'm a very visual learner, so audio things I kind of struggle with, but this one was not bad. If there was ever a time where I was just so burnt out, I couldn't read another paragraph, I would just put these on and try to listen to them as best as I could. I didn't take any notes at any point when I was listening to these. It was kind of just something I listened to. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the RX questions. So USMLE RX is from the same company as First Aid, so it's really easy to correlate between page numbers and all that stuff. They have flashcards and practice questions, and they have an answer key that gives you an explanation of the right answer as well as a reference to the pages in First Aid where you can find all that information. It's really easy to refer back to First Aid. The only thing about these questions is they're not super representative of like real board type questions. So what I found these super useful for was during my second year, I would do the questions along with my classwork. So if we were on the cardiology blog, I would do all the cardiology questions. And it helped to nail down certain concepts and um, just key information, but it didn't really do a good job of helping me get a good feel of what the real board questions would be like. So I do suggest doing the questions to help get the information down, but don't expect them to correlate great with scores or to correlate well with the type of questions that you're going to be seeing. Something else that was really awesome is that USMLERX also has an app and so I would use the flashcards on the app uh, frequently to study and it was great because if you just have like some awkward time like let's say you were meeting up with someone and you got there like five to ten minutes early and you would just normally like scroll through Instagram or something like that then if you have this app, it's a good like five, 10 minutes that you can get through maybe like five, 10 flashcards. If you ever had unplanned time and you wanted to not waste it, it was a really great app to kind of get something done and to learn a little bit. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about other resources. So I didn't use any prep courses or schedulers. I did all of my scheduling myself and I'll explain that in my next video. It's really expensive for prep courses. I'm sure they're great. Um, I don't want to speak to them because I didn't use any of them and I don't know how well they work or, you know, I can't really give any advice about them. I know that Kaplan is really popular, Doctor in Training, Smash USMLE, Board Vitals. Those are all ones that I've heard about and I know people who have used them, but I personally did not, so I don't want to speak to them. I know these courses have like a wide range of prices depending on if you do an online course or an in-person course, how many weeks your course is, like there's a lot of variability. So I saw some courses as cheap as like $500 and then others as pricey as like $9,000. So I think that usually the prices range mostly from $2,000 to $4,000. A lot of people say that's a drop in the bucket compared to how many loans they're going to take out for med school, and that's kind of true, but I just felt like I didn't really need the course and I didn't want to spend that kind of money on a course, so I didn't do any of them. I've also heard of some other really great programs like Picmonic. Um, Picmonic I think is kind of like sketchy. Um, it gives you, again, like those videos of the pictures that helps with those memorization tools. 
I didn't use it again, so I have no idea how useful or beneficial they are. And then I've heard of Firecracker as topic summaries, and then they also have practice questions, flashcards, and practice tests. I think the idea behind that is you actually use it during school. The system gets an idea of what things you have understood well and where your gaps in knowledge might come in. Um, and it helps you, once you start Dedicated, to fill in those knowledge gaps. Again, not exactly sure how it works, but that's just what I read on their website. I've heard a lot of good things about Osmosis as well. Great videos. Some of them are free online, so you can see some of them on YouTube. And other ones you have to pay for, so you have to get the premium access. We'll have more videos, practice questions, practice exams, flashcards. Osmosis is another one of those nice ones because it will correlate with other common uh, with other common resources. There's a scheduler that Osmosis has, and I don't know exactly how it works, but I do know that you put in like how much time you have for dedicated period, and maybe like some, some sort of preparation assessment, and it can then help you generate a personalized schedule. And what's really nice is that since it's correlated with other resources, it'll give you references to other things like Mnemonic, Sketchy, First Aid. So you'll be able to use that schedule and also see what other resources to use and what pages to review or on what days. Again, not exactly sure how that works, um, but I've heard really good things about it. On my next video, I'm going to be talking all about scheduling. So I'll be talking about how I figured out that I needed six weeks to study, how I determined exactly what I would study on what day, because like I said, I didn't use a scheduler, I didn't use a prep course, how I planned for my breaks, just in case time, overall how I scheduled my whole dedicated period. I was really debating it for a while about whether I should share with you what my progress was like over dedicated period, and I did decide that I was gonna share with you guys my scores on practice exams, and um, just so you could see the trend and what works for me, what didn't work for me based on my progress on NBME practice exams. But there are certain things that I wanna keep personal, so I think that I'm not going to be sharing my true score on step one with you guys. If you enjoyed this video about step one resources, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my page.